I want to talk about today um, the book Walden by Henry David Thoreau. <coughs> um, he begins this book in part by talking about how ascetics in India will walk or will uh, crawl all the way across the subcontinent of India to perform uh, austerities to pardon themselves for, from sin or to escape from bad karma. And he said, but he says that the um, farmers of New England are performing even greater austerities by rising early in the morning, working all day, then going to sleep just to maintain a farm. So what Thoreau advises, or what he doesn't advise so much, he illustrates how to live a more relaxed life, a more simplified life, and a life that is uh, free from the sort of uh, entanglements with the world that so ensnare a person and turn life into nothing but drudgery. He, he uh, does this by intentionally moving to the woods a mile from town and on Walden Pond and, you know, living sort of in accord with nature, fishing and gathering food. And, and he goes into town maybe once a day to eat or to wash his clothes. But mostly he lives a very simple, um, I would say an easier existence that is less uh, tiresome. And in writing the book, he answers a lot of the questions. Uh, for instance, were you lonesome? Were you ever afraid? He answers these questions that were brought up by some of his townspeople. And he begins also by saying that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he begins by saying that, that the book is in response to a lot of those questions. Now, Thoreau was very close to Emerson and uh, somewhat close to Walt Whitman and some of the other writers of that day in New England. Uh, Whitman found him to be somewhat morose, and uh, he didn't really like Whitman either. Uh, it's amazing how a lot of those writers were, were contemporaries and didn't know each other. Uh, for instance, no one knew Emily Dickinson. She didn't know any of these people. But they were all writing at the same time. One of the things I gather from the book is that it's very good to have an av avocation to have more than a hobby, but to have an uh, a um something you can go to, an activity you can go to for solace and for refuge, refuge from work, refuge from uh, the rigors of life, refuge from the demands of reason and logic, even refuge from all that, and where you can can be completely absorbed into the work. For me, it's poetry. <sighs> And I'm making these videos, of course. I like doing that. But trying to communicate my ideas to the world. One of the very important ideas that Thoreau communicates, he says, it is not that which goes into the mouth uh, that defiles a man, but the appetite with which it is consumed. And he gets this from the Bible. Jesus says, it's not that which goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but that which comes out. And so Jesus says, uh, you know, adultery, blasphemy, things things that come out of, you, out of you when you sin, these defile you. Um, this is in answer to the Pharisees who said uh, certain foods can defile you, like eating pork, eating shellfish, etc. And that's in, they were referring to the Mosaic Law. Um uh, but Jesus said, it's not that which goes into you that defiles you, but that which comes out. Now, Thoreau goes a step further and says, it's not that which goes into you that defiles you, but the appetite with which it is consumed. Um, so, 
which of these is right? Well, if you say your appetite defiles you, then you're defiled before you even engage in the act. You can't escape defilement. But if you say it is that which goes into you that defiles you, then it is the act of eating, the act of, you know, engaging in some some devious behavior that defiles you, and not just the appetite itself. I think I side with Jesus, actually. Um, I think it's, you are, def- I would say, in siding with Thoreau to an extent, I would say you are defiled s- s- sort of in the sense that the act is consummated with the appetite so that your appetite does defile you in the act, but you're not defiled until the act is committed. And so, um, so for instance, um, if I have the desire to harm myself, they, that desire may not defile me, but actually harming myself could kill me. So, Anyway, Thoreau, um, Walden is a wonderful book, and um, I would advise anyone to read it. I've read it twice. It's good if you're a poet because it gives you a, a larger frame of reference. You can see the woods in in the words, and that helps to, to deepen your own poetry in that it gives you a sort of uh, context for the world in poetry. And uh, I advise it for anyone. It's just a great book. And it's it's important to know something about a book before you read it. And it's important to gain, gain a little bit of knowledge about what you're reading before you read, because it requires such a commitment to read, you know, a, a work of nonfiction of this length or um, a novel, you know, or even a long poem. You have to know what you're reading because otherwise you'll just read whatever and you'll waste your time. So thank you for watching. And please, if you like this, please like and subscribe. And maybe check out my blog, Susurus Waking. That's S-U-S-U-R-R-U-S Waking. Thank you.